Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Maddie and I post bookish videos. I love being a part of the booktube community. I'm going to tell you what this video is. It's going to be a reading vlog where I actually read my August TBR. What a concept. Now, I love filming TBR videos, but honestly, my success rate, not very high. However, I have already read two books that I said I was going to read in August, and I didn't film them at all, sadly. I think I can keep the momentum going. An object in motion stays in motion. So hopefully I can read at least two or three more books on my August TBR. These are the two books I already read. How to End a Love Story by Yulin Kwong and The Paradise Problem by Christina Lauren. I gave this one 3.75 stars and I gave this one four stars because I really liked the writing. Did I love the story? No, but her writing and the, honestly the story kind of reminded me of normal people and I love my girl Sally Rooney. This was unique. This was very much like every other Christina Lauren book, um, but I love Christina Lauren. I love them, so there's that. The book I am currently reading for this video is Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna. I think this is my first Kristen Hanna novel and this book is very highly anticipated for me. Before I started reading it, in the back of my mind, I was like, this is going to be a five star read. And now that I'm 20% into it, I can see it actually being a five star read. Kristen Hanna's writing is incredible. I feel like I'm flying through it. I'm already a hundred pages into it and I started it yesterday. The story takes place over decades and it's a really long book, but I feel as if I'm moving through it pretty quickly. It is a long book, but it doesn't feel super daunting to me because I'm enjoying it so far and all I wanna do is just sit down and read it. Listen, you don't have to tell me, I know this is a sad book and it's probably going to destroy me, but I love emotional books. And I feel like I already know what happens because this book has been out for a while and there's even a TV show out on Netflix about it, which I think I started to watch at one point and then I was like, girl, you gotta read the book first. I think I know a few things that happen and I'm still probably not ready for those things to happen. But I will come back to you guys with more updates when I'm further into the book. through with Firefly Lane by Chris and Hannah and no updates really. I'm still really liking it. There's a lot of plot. Her writing's good. The character development is good. I'm just kind of waiting for the big thing to happen. I mean a lot of big things are happening but I mean obviously I'm not gonna be able to tell you how I really feel until I finish it. But it is funny to read about the two friends because they are so different. It's about Tolly and Kate. So it's interesting to read about and see how they haven't had like a big blowout fight yet, even though they're so different, but I know a storm is a brewing. Storm is coming. I'll update you guys when I have more interesting thoughts. Bye. And this is my husband, Sam. <laughs> Are you introducing me? Maybe I have some new followers, okay? Like and subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. I have a whopping eight views on my last video that I published today. Road to 700 subscribers. Road to 700. Now. What book are you reading? Uh, Red Rising 3 called Morningstar. Yeah, he's been flying through these. He loves them. Yeah, I think it started a week and a half ago. Or yeah. no, two weeks ago today. You're welcome. Yeah. Has it only been two weeks ago? Because you got it for my birthday. You finished the first Red Rising literally in three days though. Well, I wanted to finish the next two and three days, but then work. Yeah. Ugh, I hate that. I hate when work gets in the way. Yeah. Okay. Love you. Oh, you don't love me? I love you too. <laughs> hey guys, this is not my best look. I think I have a theory. I think I have a theory of how this is gonna end. This is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt. Bye. next day I'm just wearing the same clothes. I'm extremely sunburned. I'm 90% through with the book and I was wrong about my prediction. In fact, it's so much worse. 
bro. Oh, it's so much worse. Okay, so yesterday I think I said I know what's going to happen and I was wrong. And I don't even know why I guessed that because in the back of my mind, I always knew this was going to happen for some reason. I think I saw a spoiler for the show on TikTok, and so I knew this was going to happen this way, but I can't read books about this anymore because it's too sad. I'm about to finish it, and I'm never going to be happy again. So, checking with you guys later. Does my hair look cute? Mm. Firefly Lane and the ending did tug on my heartstrings and it did make me emotional but right away I knew it wasn't going to be a five-star read for me which is kind of sad because I think I talked about in the beginning of this video it was such a highly anticipated read for me and I thought it was gonna be five stars and it just simply wasn't but it was still amazing I'm still thinking about everything that happened it was great storytelling the characters were so well developed they felt real to me they still feel real to me I don't know there was just so much packed into the book it did slow down for maybe one part for me but once I got to that halfway mark I think I read the last 50% in one day the only reason why it wasn't five stars is because along with the characters being so well developed they pissed me off at times <laughs> and I was so frustrated with one of the characters more so than another it was just it was painful it was a painful read for me because i felt like one of the friends was a better friend than the other one but i mean that's a good story you know the, ca the characters were flawed chris and hannah knows how to write a book she knows how to do that i'm also watching the tv show right now and i love it so much it is different from the books the characters are very similar like how they handle everything and how they interact with each other is very similar but there are a lot of differences as well and i'm actually going to talk about those differences now and these are going to be spoilers from the book and the tv show so please fast forward to this part of the video if you don't want to hear this okay so they both have their flaws kate and tolly but in the book tolly just got on my nerves and i know she has a lot of trauma and i get it i totally get it like at the end of kate's life she was reflecting on stuff and like when they had that those few years where they didn't talk at all Kate was like I'm always the one to pick up the phone first and make a joke and like say I'm sorry even though Tolly is the one that should be saying I'm sorry just because Tolly doesn't say I'm sorry she literally never says those words she's just like oh let's move on like let's be friends again but Kate had obviously finally had it and was like I'm not saying that if I remember this correctly even at the very end when Kate was dying Tolly still never said I'm sorry and I, maybe that's wrong but she never I remember Kate saying how she would never say those words. And so that was kind of frustrating with like even time being precious that totally still didn't know how to be the bigger person, but whatever. The other thing that bothered me so bad is that, okay, Kate always had a crush on Johnny, right? And Johnny always had a crush on Tolly but Tolly never wanted to settle down or anything. And so one day Johnny finally got eyes for Kate, but there were all these moments where like even at Kate and Johnny's wedding, Kate caught Johnny looking at Tolly, blah, 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 blah. I don't know how Kate married that man because if I knew that he had a thing for my best friend that doesn't like him, I just don't know how Kate married him knowing that he always liked Tolly first. That's crazy. That's crazy. Their friendship, like her and Tolly's friendship would never be the same. And I also feel like Kate and Johnny's relationship would feel different knowing that you were his second choice. And ultimately once they got together and they got married, he loved her more than anything in the world. And he always put her first, but just like that, what if, you know, I absolutely hated that. Okay. But now in the TV show, you know how I said Tolly was more frustrating in the books, but in the TV show, they both are equally flawed from what I've seen so far. Um, and they made Kate more unlikable by having her emotionally cheat on Johnny. So right now in the beginning of the show, they're not 
together they're separated i don't know how it's gonna end up hopefully they end up together but i have equal feelings of dislike for both kate and tolly because tolly's tolly and then they added more drama to kate's life as well and then in the tv show it's a little different with how johnny and kate end up together because kate always does like johnny from the beginning and i think johnny liked tolly i don't know they didn't really touch on it much but eventually johnny has eyes for kate and there are a few times where he goes to tell her but she actually starts dating someone else in their office mutt who's the cameraman and so the only reason that johnny has eyes for tolly in the movie is because kate is unavailable so i like that aspect more than the other way around like i always liked kate and johnny together because tolly is literally like a wrecking ball and i get it she, there's reasons but i like that better than like knowing you are someone's second choice i don't know i don't know all that being said, I just watched the part where he still hooked up with Tolly and I hated that. I absolutely hated that. They were not meant to be. There's a lot of other differences. Like, for example, Kate did not need to have a golden retriever and the golden retriever absolutely did not need to die. No, it did not. So points taken away for that. The characters feel so much like the characters in the book, how they interact with each other, like the things they do. There are some scenes that are exactly like the book. There are some more that are added and it still feels like it feels like the book i don't know i really enjoy it so far and i'm excited to see how it plays out so i'm sorry i just talked about this book for literally the whole video it feels like but i did start another book on my tbr and i'm going to talk about it tomorrow when i'm further into it good night go read firefly lane i recommend it to you and to anybody you know hey guys <laughs> I am the worst YouTuber ever. I haven't been vlogging, I haven't been reading. Here we are. This video was supposed to go up mid-August. It's now August 25th and I feel like I have to post it soon. Otherwise, what was the point of the video? Because it's called reading my August TBR books and it's now the end of August. <laughs> However, I did start another book. And also, I know I talked about Firefly Lane a lot in my last clip and I was talking about the TV show. I thought the TV show was only one season. And so on episode nine, I was like, wow, how are they not gonna wrap this up? This seems crazy, this seems rushed. Then I realized there was actually a season two with 16 episodes. So yeah, on season two, I'm loving it. Read the book first and then watch the TV show. TV show is amazing though. So I started um, Better Than The Movies by Lynn Painter. Told myself I would update you guys when I'm halfway through or when I had strong thoughts and opinions about it. But so far, I don't have strong opinions. I, I really like it so far. I think Liz and Wes are cute together and I'm finally starting to read it faster because a lot of Wes and Liz moments are now happening instead of Liz and Michael. What this book is about, if you guys don't know, I'm sure you know, it's a young adult romance novel. It's about Liz who is a rom-com lover, loves reading romance novels and wants to have a relationship like the movies. And to make this happen, she decides to date her next door neighbor, Wes, fake date Wes, to make Michael jealous, who is her childhood crush that just moved back into town. And along the way, Wes and Liz form a friendship, and I'm sure you guys know who ends up together because it's basically on the back of this book. What I like about this book is that at the beginning of every chapter, there's a quote from a famous romantic comedy and it's making me want to go back and watch every rom-com ever and watch some that I haven't seen. There's a lot of them that I've heard about but haven't seen and then there's some I've actually heard nothing about ever. So need to go watch those. I think I can finish this today. We'll see. I'm kind of tired from all of the traveling we've been doing, but I will update you guys soon. everybody i finished better than the movies yesterday it was a cutesy young adult romance novel if that's what you're looking for i do have to say i think this falls into the category of books i overhyped myself i've obviously seen tons of people rave about this book and so in the back of my mind i was like oh this is gonna be a great book because it's gonna be five stars and don't get me wrong it was a great book but I think I kind of let myself down since I've been wanting to read this for so long and putting it off that it just did not hit 
for me. And I actually think I like the do-over by Lynn Painter more than this one. I don't know if that's true, but it made me feel more feelings. Don't get me wrong, this was a good book, but I don't have any like really strong emotions tied to it. I'm unsure of the rating. I didn't rate it on Goodreads, but it's definitely a three or higher. Some type of like 3.5, 3.25 situation. I definitely recommend it. I just, I overhyped it, okay? That's, that's all there is. I've done this with a few other books as well. I did that recently with Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez and a few others that I can't think of. I will mention two parts of this book that stood out to me. <laughs> the first one, I'm literally a 12 year old. There was a fart joke in this book and it made me laugh so hard I had to stop reading it because I was on public transportation and I was trying to tell Sam what was so funny and I couldn't even get the words out. It was embarrassing. It was also like 8 a.m. I just, I needed to stop. I needed to chill. Maybe I was delusional, but also the teenage girl in me thought that was hilarious. I love a good bathroom joke. And then also, I think Wes brought it up actually, that seeing a cardinal is kind of like someone you lost checking on you or saying they love you and stuff like that. When he was referencing Liz's mom, he said he like always thinks of her when he sees cardinals outside. And I love that because that's something I was taught growing up. My mom always said the same thing about cardinals and it's not just like my mom's thing. It is a well-known thing. So I loved that. And then the other thing that annoyed me is what annoys me in every romance book is that the characters never get together until the end and then I don't get to see enough of the characters, especially if there's not really an epilogue. And we did not get to see Liz and Wes together together, like when they're actually considered dating at all. And so I'm not mad that there is a sequel because I actually do want to see more of these characters and I think I will actually read that soon. It's called Nothing Like the Movies and it came out recently so I guess I'm glad I waited to read better than the movies so I don't really forget what happened. And also Liz, the main character, just kind of annoyed me too. Like she lied and I don't know. She was going through things but not my favorite female main character. And then the last thing I want to say that wraps up this video. Sorry, I only read two books, but I mean, it's better than not reading any books on my TBR. As I'm watching Firefly Lane, here I go, back to talking about Firefly Lane. I rated the book four stars, but as I'm watching the TV show and loving it and seeing the characters come to life, I feel like the TV show complements the book so well. It's like enhancing my experience with the Firefly Lane girls. And I almost want to break the book higher to like 4.5. Is that allowed? Because it's the TV show adaptation, it's not the book, but the storyline is so good in the TV series as well. I don't know, it's just perfect in my mind. The characters are perfect. And that's kind of how I felt about Normal People by Sally Rooney. When I read the book, I gave it four stars. And then when I saw the TV show and I saw the characters come to life, now I reference that book as a five-star book because the TV adaptation just like blew my mind. It was beautiful and heartbreaking and perfect. So now I kind of want to give Firefly Lane like a higher rating. I don't know. Those are my thoughts. I need to shut up and edit this video and post it. If you're still watching this, thank you so much. I love posting YouTube videos and I have been discouraged lately that nobody watches them, but surprise, I'm still going to post forever. Don't forget to like and comment down below if you're a silent viewer if you never comment or like anything but you always watch my videos just say hey just say hey go follow my book talk my bookstagram my goodreads down below and i will see you guys next week for a new video oh, 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 oh.